Hey guys, Extra Metal here, doing another expression 2 tutorial, this is my second one, and I'm going to be going over functions. Now, the heads up display wouldn't work before, I don't know why it wouldn't work on the other video, but I seem to sort of fi like find out how to trick it to staying up. Now, I'm, now it should record the, the good stuff, the stuff that we need. So, let's get started. There's I keep forgetting what they are. There's four statements. If, for, while, and else if. And I'm going to be going over all four of them. So, just type in what I type pretty much. My first E2. Because, yeah, you can copy what I'm putting in. It'll pretty much be your first E2 if you've nothing done nothing like this before nothing it's not a word we need to get rid of trigger um, don't really need persist we don't need persist there we go so button oh yeah sorry about the first tutorial how I put in basics not even the basics this is more of the basics and I didn't really go over the inputs and outputs very well um, Basically, the reason why this has to be, the first letter has to be capital, is to define that it is a variable, and in the first video I put in string, sorry, I can't spell, I p still can't spell, put in string, and that defines that it is a string, you don't have to type this, by the way, it defines that it is a string, a string variable, but if I don't have anything after it, it's a numeric variable, which means it holds a number. So we want the E2 to keep refreshing itself. And I'm going to be telling you about the function interval. You're not really meant to be doing stuff like this. It's not very... Oh, well, you can do this. It'll work fine either way, but it's not very efficient so we'll put in one so this is to I think it's the one a thousandth of a second I'm pretty sure the minimum it'll do is to um, 10 you can put in one it'll still mean 10 and if you wanted to refresh every second just put 1000 times 1000 and then edit this to whatever second you want so you want 80 seconds just type 80 right there you want 10 seconds right there but we're just going to keep it run for this tutorial so let's get on to our first if statement so if these brackets stand for whatever is in here and then there's these curly brackets so what whatever is in these brackets if like whatever is in between these brackets is true it'll run whatever whatever is in here I can't spell I've already went over that though whatever is in here so we'll get rid of that you didn't have to type that in sorry probably should have said that at the start so if button is equal to that's what both of them equal signs means I'll probably go over them in another tutorial. If button equals 1 is equal to 1, then screen equals, you can put whatever number you want in here. I just put in 50. And save that as my first E2. Spawn it. See how this stuff is coming up now? The stuff that would. Where'd it go? this is now coming up that's what I had trouble doing before now you want to spawn not that you want to spawn a screen now you want you can type in text a whatever you want make sure it's only one value bigger front single value screen I don't know what that is I think that's new and create to surface oh floor screen value geez I wish they put it in a while ago if they did oh. 
that would be great. Great, create flat surface. Um, actually, you want that ticked off. You, you, yeah, you want that ticked to off. I mean, now scroll down to wire advanced because every other wire is a pain in the ass. Oh no, not wire advanced yet. It needs to get a button. Now you want to make sure toggle is off because by default it's usually on. And now you want to scroll down to wire advanced because regular wire is just too difficult. Now you want to wire a button to out of the button and you want to wire the screen to to A. Why? Oh yeah, you want to wire the the A A output to the input of screen. Actually, that's the opposite. The input of screen to the output of button. No, not button. Oh, sorry. Screen. And now when you push the button, it goes 50. It changes that to 50. But n you're probably wondering why it doesn't go back to zero when you let go of the button. It should just, should just hold the button and it should stay 50 but when you let go it stops well the reason for that is that you haven't actually told the E2 to actually return the value back to zero but if you want to do that you want to do if button is equal to zero then screen equals zero and this button down here is really helpful to you just click it and it finds out what part of the code is wrong and it'll also come up where it says validation successful what is wrong so upload and exit and that will return back to zero because we haven't set it and when you push one it goes to 50 when you let go it goes to zero now there is a, a um, extension to the if statement you could either do what I've done here, or there is else screen equals zero. Now what this means is if button equals one, screen equals fifty. But if it doesn't, then screen should equal zero. So whatever in if whatever is in here is true it'll run this but if it isn't it will run this let's see if it works see it works okay now let's go over the while statement what just happened all I did was push enter okay I'll control Z that Control Z that again. If you push Control Z, it'll it'll bring back whatever you've done. It's pretty much a back button. Now, <laughs> actually, we might just start up a fresh new E2 for this. I'm going to be doing the while statement, and I can't really do a practical. Um, I can't do a practical demonstration of this. Sorry. Second E2. You don't really have to write this, but it'll help. Um, we'll just get rid of them because I won't be doing it practical. Now, while is a bit like an if statement, but it's a little bit different. It's in some cases it can be less efficient than an if statement, and it can't put that you ca you can't put else on the end of it just comes up an error and I won't accept it. However, if whatever in here, in here is true, then it'll keep running this. Now, dif difference between this and an if statement is that if whatever is in here is true, it will keep running this until this part is not true. So, like, it will bring up the ops, which is operations per second, it'll it can bring up the ops really fast so 
yeah, it's kind of annoying when that happens, but I usually don't use, I usually just use if statements, so I can't really do a demonstration of this, I'm sorry, but um, this statement usually goes, hits hard quota pretty fast, unless you put, um, yeah, and is like another type of feature, there's also or, uh, or, which is next to your backspace button, you gotta push shift, that's what or, or there's and, so if hi and hello equals one, like if you just leave them on their own, you don't have them equal something, it means if they equal one, or while they equal one, in this case, it'll just keep running this, but as soon as one of these doesn't doesn't become true, it'll stop running this and run the rest of the code here. Now, if you want to stop it from hitting hard quota, but this makes it a little bit less efficient, or a lot less actually, you can put in perf function. Now what the perf function does, it means perfect, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. But if it's like about to hit hard quota, it'll, that will become false. It'll make whatever is in here false. And then it'll stop running the while statement, therefore lowering the ops so it doesn't hit hard quota it doesn't work every time but it works it makes the E2 less efficient which is why I don't really like using it I only use it when I'm creating holograms okay let's make another one let's do the for statement um, we won't be needing them actually so let's do hmm my third e2 I guess I'm doing multiple e2s in this one so actually we do need a persist persist for we'll just make a for variable okay so for here we go. For for actually that'll be too confusing. Let's make it a. I just make it for sometimes. For each a that equals one, run fifth. Actually, not five hundred. That's too high. Ten. And I guess I'll be teaching you how to create a hollow in this one as well. Hollow create oh and the positioning of it. Hollow create A. Actually, was that a vector? Let's find out. Can we set the position? Hollow Oops. Hollow create. Oh you can set the position as well. I was going to do set position function, but that's, that helps. Vector. Vector is a little confusing if you're new to it. So I'm not going to be really doing it this tutorial. I'll go over it in another one, but vector is like an XYZ location type thing. So let's do A times. That's what that star stands for. I guess. So for A run ten times. So hollow create it basically counts it goes through this code and A pretty much plus pluses by one. I'm not sure what happens if you change that variable but most of the time you just need that one as one equals one. Actually let's check if that's right. yeah it's alright. Um if so the first time it'll run through this code, A will equal one, and then it'll equal two, and then it'll equal three, 
all the way up to this number which is 10 but if I set that to 20 not 100 I removed that comma you need that comma to separate them separate these two parts so it'll run 20 times now so let's actually I can do a practical example of this yeah don't upload it to that E2 hopefully it works oh I'm sorry I need to put in entity position plus yeah that'll be too confusing this is entity equals e2 if it hasn't been set to anything and the position is the position of the e2 plus all that just don't worry about it and there we go we have actually you can't see it very well I might move over to the grass area okay spawn it here and it'll make a tower of holograms now that that bit too far there's like 20 all bunched up there so make that about 10 whoops push control Z to get rid of all that crap that I deleted I don't know how I deleted all of it let's make that actually let's make that 20 now they'll be spaced apart and that's 20 holograms right there all once above each other now when, once it hits 10 it will stop creating the hollows now what we want to do if we want to lower the amount or make more I think I'll just lower it I would want 10 hollows to spawn so bang half so if I want 3 I'll just change that to 3 bang three hollows awesome now let's go to the fourth statement I'll just work on my first D2 again I guess yeah let's just work on that so we'll get rid of the else because we've already went over that it's sort of it is a bit like the else if actually now let's just start typing then I'll explain it later else if bison equals zero screen equals fifty no not fifty zero sorry and see if button yep that works yeah that's right validate it it's all good my first E2. Yep, it works. Now, else if is a bit like an if statement, but it will make. Oh, what is that? There's some. Oh, that's right, it's garbage there. Never mind. If button equals 1, then screen equals 50. But if that's wrong, it will check if this is right and then run that if that's wrong it'll just skip this it'll skip both of them it won't do anything but if you just left it to if it it will actually just check if that is right and then run that it won't care about that part but it's a bit more efficient if that is right it won't care about this part at all it'll just skip straight down to here so let's run that see if it works oh did I fix it up yeah no it works what did I do wrong I guess I unwired him sorry I'll have to wire him again I didn't even select the wire what is going on with this computer I didn't even select the wire tool. Okay, but yeah, I did unwire him. Sorry. Now when I push one, it goes to 50. Else if the button equals zero, it will go to zero. And there are all the four if statements. So, like and subscribe. See ya.